Abraham, Abraham, Arthur, Abraham, Leo, Abramowitz, Sarah, Abramowitz, Abraham, Adamski, Dvora, Adamski, Friedel, Adamski, Motel, Adamski, Avraham, Ulster, Fanny, Ulster, Felix, Ulster, Josef, Ulster, Bruno, Altman, Herman, Altman, Suzanne, Charlotte, Altman, Julius, Aaron, Tony, Aaron, Alina, Bacall, Bacalchik, Leo, Bacall, Bacalchik, Paul, Bacher, Carolyn, Lowenberg, Bear, Gertrude, Bear, Hedwig, Bear, Inga, Bear, Julius, Bear, Margaret, Bear, Alexander, Balog, Bertha, Balog, Joseph, Balog, Benno, Yitzchak, Dov, Bamberger, Jonas, Moshe, Bamberger, Michael, Barishpolsky, Naum, Barishpolsky, Esther, Becker, Herschel, Becker, Libby, Becker, Naftali, Becker, Bessie Lovitz Becker, Justine Bendian, Zev Bendov, Brochel Benyakonsky, Peret Benyakonsky, Betty Berilowicz, uh, Deborah Berilowicz, Chaya Berilowicz, Hirsch Berilowicz, Menachem Berilowicz, Shmuel Berilowicz, Isidore Berger, Ethel Bergerbaum, Schneer Bergerbaum, Leon Berkowitz. This is my friend. Yeah. Moshe Berkowitz, Rachel Berkowitz, Esther Berlin, Pessy Berlin, Yehoshua Berlin, Moshe Berliner, Rina Berliner, Israel Beanstock, my grandfather, Lushik Beanstock, my mother's young older brother, Sarah Beanstock, my grandmother, David Bilwa, Maria Bilwa, Paul Bilwa, Aaron Bach, Edward Bach, Emmanuel Bach, Ernestine Bach, Irena Bach, Irene Bach, Irving Bach, Judah Bach, Julius Bach, Lajos Bach, Yaakov Bach, Zygmunt Bach, Frida Bodenheimer, Matthias Borsuk, Avram Braverman, Felix Bronner, oh my Bertha Brown, Max Brown, Fega Chai, Adele Hamides, Bella Hamides, Benjamin Hamides, Favish Hamides, Frida Rach Hamides, Gertrude Hamides, Isaac Hamides, Yitzchak Hamides, Judah Schiff Hamides, Leah Hamides, Mechel Hamides, Milek Hamides, Miriam Luft Hamides, 
Mundazio Chamaides, Mundik Chamaides, Rabbi Kalman Chamaides, Rachel Leah Chamaides, Salka Chamaides, Sarah Chamaides, Shandel Chamaides. Oh my gosh. Shulam Chamaides, Tema Chamaides, Tzipora Bettersfield Chamaides, Yankala Chamaides, Razel Chamaides and husband, David Chase, Beryl Chodos, Cherna Chodos, Sorl Chodos, Zalman Chodos, Israel Chomsky, Tolba Cohen and family, Fanny Kukier, Henry Kukier, Jacques Kukier, Meyer Kukier, Cecilia David, Herman David, Leah David, Shia David, Tina David, Tzvi Hirsch David, Yehuda Dan David, Yerge Dinas, uh, Bohana Dimajo, Yaakov Dimajo, Samuelo Dimajo, Solomon Dimajo, Tuvi Dimajo, Bundy Dennis, George Dennis, Isidore Dennis, Matilda Dennis, Pishta Dennis, Bernhard Drucker, Devora Debovi, Dove Bear Debovi, Kopel Debovi, Berka Edelman and family, Anna Ehrenfeld, Jacob Ehrenfreund, Jeanette Ehrenfreund, Rachel Ehrenkrantz, Wilhelm Ehrenkrantz, Jack Eisler, Lily Eisler, Hilda Ehrenreich and family, Harry Federbush, Figueroa family, Joseph Fleischer, Froim Flegel, Ignac Flegel, Jean Flegel, Elizabeth Fodor, Frederick Fodor, Goldie Frankus, Solomon Frankus, Aranka Frankel, Hashi Frankel, Margaret Frankel, Fanny Friedman, Herman Friedman, Olga Friedman, Benjamin Frisch, my grandfather, Eugene Frisch, my father, Jacob Frisch, my father's brother, and Regina Frisch, my father's mother, Avram Zavel Frydenberg, Bluma Frydenberg, and Frondel Frydenberg. Ville Gluck, Osriel Zelig Goldberg, David Goldberg, Herschel Goldberg, Joseph Goldberg, Liebeck Goldberg, Moshe Goldberg, Marion Golden, Zachary Golden, Genya Goldscher, Feige Goldstein, Fagel Goldstein, Gerson Schmuel Goldstein, Hannah Jakobowitz Goldstein, Sam Goldstein, Shulem Goldstein, Hanna Goldwasser, Esther Goldwasser, Maria Goldwasser, Rikla Pedra Goldwasser Lamhout, Esther Golintzeshak, Gedali Golintzeshak, Mara Leah Golintzeshak, Elka Goodman, the Gottfried family, Kathinka Goldshock Sonneberg, Boris Gradinger, Herman Grunbaum, Selma Grunbaum, 
Helene Grunbaum Hahn, Bob Bumek Grunschlag, Branya Grunschlag, Gedale Grunschlag, Kopel Grunschlag, Peppa Grunschlag, Lucia Grunschlag Sachs, Ada Grunschlag Gingold, Max Gunter, Mina Gunter Gutmann, Caroline Gunter Rosenfeld, Rana Gertmann, Hannah Gertmann, Henry Gertmann, Naha Gertmann, Rose Gutwell, Israel Halpern, Leah Halpern, Mendel Halpern, Eva Heller, Janinka Heller, Vilda Heller, Lily Hertz, Lola Hertz, Leah Sriel Hirsch, Yitzhak Meyer Hirsch, Caroline Hexter, Irene Hopenheim, B. Israel, or Bed Israel, Bertha Israel, Jacob Israel, Kurt Israel, Herschel Jachamovitz, Nachman Jachamovitz, Esterka Jachamovitz, Fred Jacobs, Regina Jacobs, Feige Jaffe, Frummel Jaffe, Moisha Jaffe, Mottel Jaffe, Rochel Jaffe, I Melech Jacob Jacobowitz, Rachel Jacobowitz, Avram Jacobowitz, Frimet Jacobowitz, Gershon Jacobowitz, Hana Jacobowitz, Leah Jacobowitz, Noah Jacobowitz, Sipora Jacobowitz, Wolf Jacobowitz, Yossel Jacobowitz, Toba Jacobowitz Kordnor, Margo Jeremias, Yidka Kachka, Moshe Mendel Kachka, Blima Rivka Kachka, Yidka Kachka, Rushka Katska Kozlowski, Avremel Kaganovich, Basha Kaganovich, Beryl Kaganovich, Dora Kaganovich, Fanya Kaganovich, Isser Kaganovich, Luba Kaganovich, Manya Kaganovich, Moshe Kaganovich, Moshe Lieb Kaganovich, Mottel Kaganovich, Rose Kaganovich, Sorrel Kaganovich, Yussel Kaganovich, Emma Rivka Kampf, Nissen Kampf, Saul Kaplowitz, Benjamin Karl, Elias Karl, Mala Karl, Rivka Kamaitis Karl, Marita Karp, Celia Zimmer Kassau, Jacob Kassau, The Katz Family, Adele Kaufman, Irma Kaufman, Max Kaufman, Aaron Kazimeric, Avraham Kazimeric, Franya Kazimeric, Hans Kazimeric, Jacob Kazimeric, Rivka Kazimeric, Sarah Kazimeric, Simon Kazimeric, Wolf Kazimeric, Strolek Kent, Esther Jacobson Konigshofer, Helene Tarlowski Konigshofer, Jacob Loeb Konigshofer, Joseph Heinemann Konigshofer, Naftali Wolf Konigshofer, Edith Kynes, Leah Kynes, Gidon Kynes, Harry Kynes, Natan Kynes, Jakob Kynes, Zvi Kynes, Leah Kynes Newman, Esterka Kynes Jachimovic, Leon Klein, Stella Klein, Floria Konigshofer, Hannah Konigshofer Altman, Merle Konigshofer Bomberger, Lias Konigsberg, Moshe Konigsberg, Simon Conover, Hannah Lustig Kopel, 
Bella Cordunar, Devora Cordunar, Feige Cordunar, Favel Cordunar, Itzhak Cordunar, Moshe Cordunar, Peter Cordunar, Peter Huppa Cordunar, Raffel Cordunar, Saul Cordunar, Sura Corduna, Sylvia Hopa Corduna, Sylvia Corduna, Toby Jakobowitz Corduna, Wolf Corduna, Joseph Korzenik, the Kosak family, Akiva Counter, Aram Counter, Ella Counter, Zelda Counter, Benek Kozolowski, Hanna Kozolowski, Rushka Kozlowski, Benjamin Krieger, Francia Krieger, Kyle Krieger, Moses Krieger, Mottel Krieger, Rosa Christeller, Michael Kroll, Sophie Kroll, Rosa Kurtz, Sonia Kurtzberg, my aunt, Pearl Kurtzberg, my aunt, Abraham Kurtzberg, my grandfather, Henia Kurtzberg, my aunt, Joseph Kurtzberg, my uncle, Aaron Kurtzberg, my uncle, Esther Kurtzberg, my grandmother, Flata Lachenbach, Oscar Lachenbach, Isaac Lumhout, Abraham Langer, Alter Langer, Ephraim Langer, Ethel Langer, Isaac Langer, Kuppel Langer, Meyer Langer, Moshe Langer, Pincus Langer, Regina Longer, Zelman Longer, Aaron Lazowski, Avraham Lazowski, Chaya Gittel Lazowski, Yosef Lazowski, Rachel Lazowski, Lee Letterer, Avraham Letterman, Esther Letterman, Renaya Lettleman, Mania Leifer, the Ortum family, Lydia Ella Levenberg, Rail Levenberg, Yitzchak Meyer Levenberg, Helene Levy, Herman Levy, Julius Levy, Meyer Levy, Bertel Levy, Dan Machold Liesel, Judy Liesel, Wolfgang Liesel, Lova Lifschitz, Masha Lifschitz, Abraham Lapiner, Sarah Lapiner, Clara Loeb, Rosal Loeb, Julia Laoren, Margaret Laornick, Leopold Lowe, Berthold Lowenstein, Martha Lowenstein, Greta Lowenstein Meyer, Getcha Lowe Gottschalk, Joseph Lorzenik, Esfer Lubershaya Rajumkaya, Nuse Lubershaya, Rivka Lubershaya, Bernard Lupka, Felix Lupka, Regina Lupka, Samuel Lupka, Abrasha Ludwinovsky, Miriam Ludwinovsky, Anna Luftglass, Elias Luftglass, Henry Luftglass, Roman 
Luftglass, Malvina, Majulik, Sabina, Majulik, Janendal, Malavani, Gittel, Malavani, Herschel, Malavani, Philip, Malavani, Rikva, Malavani, Velvel, Malavani, Chaya, Manella, Joseph, Manella, Miriam, Manella, Mordechai, Manella, Luis, Man, Victor, Man, Paul Manistovsky, Aaron Meyerwitz, Rose Meyerwitz, Jacob Mir, my grandfather, Rosa Mir, my grandmother, Hannah Meyer, David Miram, Arthur Mitlock, Barrow Mitlock, Dina Mitlock, Rachel Mitlock, Yosef Madrik Kamin and family, Yosef Monshine, Hanka Monshine, Yurik Montak family, Shupa Moskowitz, Herman Friedman, Mothausen, Emmanuel Nastaskin, Bayana Naskanina, Mania Naskina, Mimi Nemenchik, Sara Lee Nemenchik, Israel Nemenchik and grandmother, Irving Newman, Lana Newman, Lisa Newman, Anna Hyman Odenheimer, I.D. Oxenhandler, Akiva Oxenhandler, Hella Oxenhandler, Herschel Oxenhandler, Yaakov Oxenhandler, Shlomo Oxenhandler, Yachetel Oxenhandler, Yaakov Olek, Edwin Osborne, Abram Peeker, Gadali Peeker, Hannah Peeker, Isaac Peeker, Moisey Peeker, Rivka Peeker, Hyman Peru, Mark Pinkowski, Beryl Pinsker, Chaya Pinsker, Esther Pinsker, Regina Pinsker, Arbiza Pola, A. Poliska, Libby Poliska, Shalom Poliska, Edna Post, Florence Post, Carla Rivka Purcell, Hirsch Live Purcell, Idis Liddell Prokopitz, Eli Prusan, Malka Prusan, Messiah Yenta Prusan, Meyer Prusan, Yachka Gita Prusan, Miriam Rabinovitz, Morris Rabinovitz, George Rott, Joseph Rafalovich, Misha Rujamni, Leon Reif, Dina Reisman, Yaakov Reisman, Abba Reisman and family, Chaim Reisman and family, Moshe Reisman and family, Nachemiah Reisman and family, Natan Reisman and family, Shmuel Reisman and family, Hilda Bieber Odenheimer Rice, Ben Rogozinski Ross, Hanina Rosenblatt, Chaya Sura Rosenblatt. Helena Rosenfeld, Simon Rosenfeld, Haskell Rosner, Rita Chosia Ross, Edzia Rosenberg, Marisol Rosenberg, Jacob Rob, Baruch Rob and family, Fruma Rob and husband and two sons, Gayla Rubin, Ania Rubenstein, Dora Rubenstein, Sky, Joseph Rubensky, Mana Rubensky, 
Pincus Rubensky, Yentel Rubensky, Elsa Sachs, Kurt Sachs, Ben Sackier, Luba Sackier, Herschel Sander Arvich, Pepek Shadbin, Abraham Shahrashkizi, Menash Shankrach, Sarah Shankrach, Menash Shankrach, Regina Shankrach, Salah Shankrach, Moses Schiff, Emma Shamo, Emma Schoen, Mary Ann Schoen, Rosa Schoen, Sarah Schoen, Clara Schoenenthal, Finia Schoenenthal, Zulam Schoenenthal, Liba Shore, Ludmila Shore, Mika Grunchla Shore, Moses Shore, Belek Shore, Israel Schreiber, Saul Schreiber, Adele Schultz, Judith Schultz, Leah Schultz, Moshe Schultz, Nathan Schultz, Pinchka Schultz, Laura Schwartz, David Schwarzberg, Sarah Schwarzberg, Judith Shemil Rott, Saffron Family, George Scheinfarber, Jacob Scheinfarber, Leah Scheinfarber, Sarah Scheinfarber, Shandell Scheinfarber, Ephraim Sharunsky, Shelk Family, Herman Shepard, Avram Schreibman, Nikhan Schreibman, Rachel Schreibman, Betty Shook, Morris Shook, Celia Silverman, Israel Silverman, Joseph Silverman, Leo Silverman, Mandel Silverman, Moses Silverman, Sala Silverman, Simon Silverman, Vanessa Silverman, Henry Simon, Lena Simon, Aaron Singer, Gitalia Singer, Adele Singer, Nissel Singer, Pinch a Singer, Danu David Solomon, Max Schoenberg, Anne Margaret Sperber, Abraham Sperber, Ephraim Sperber, Lizalata Sperber, Malka Sperber, Meyer Sperber, Flora Irons Spear, Flora Near Lion Spear, Fran Robert Spear, Louis Spear, Agnes Spitzer, Rachel Spitzer, David Springer, Henry Springer, Irene Springer, Jacob Springer, Jonas Springer, Sal Springer, Bellish Schackenberg, Benjamin Schackelberg, Dora Schackelberg, Isaac Schackelberg, Ida Schackelberg Langer, Pincus David Stein, Alex Stern, Edmund Stern, Joseph Korzenik Strasfield, Azriel Zanag, Kava Sanag, Rebecca Sanag, Batya Sanag Koner, Fruma Chanakas, Gustav Tillman, Kurt Tillman, Theodore Tillman, Werner Tillman, Walter Tobias, Zier Tabafich and wife and two daughters, Sahana Sijeklin, Marcel Mir Stop Zekovitz, Yitzchak Sajikna, Matso Sajikna and family, Hana, but Sikna Bernard Vahat Sik Sky, David Vahat Sik Sky, Leon Vahat Sky, Valencia Sky family, Devorah Vogelman, Avram Volkus, Bat. Leah Volgus, Miriam Volgus, family, Volgus family, Moses Weinberg, Hannah Rachel Weinberg and family, Abby Weiner, Abraham Weingold, Gerda Weingold, Rosa Weingold, Magdia Weiss, 
Farida Wellner, Joseph Wellner, Max Wishnia, Sherna Wishnia, Dacia Wittenberg, Benjamin, Benjamin Wittenberg, Herman Wolf, Ida Wolf, Joseph Wolf, Marianne Konigshofer Wolf, Henry Yankovich, Harry Zanstein, Helen Zanstein Zorbach family, Leon Zeberg, Zeldin family, Murray Zemo, Sabrina Zemo, Bracha Zerikar, Goldie Zerikar, Pearl Zerikar, Sam Zerikar, Joseph Zola, Chaya Zwas, Itcha Swas, Joseph Swas, Miriam Swibom, Morris Swibom. Good evening. My name is Eliane Felicite Esther Friedel Sandler, and I am the daughter of two Holocaust survivors. My mother, Gisela Mariana Zax, of blessed memory, was a survivor of Theresienstadt, Auschwitz, Kurzbach, and the Death March. My father, Severin Adamski, of blessed memory, never would have called himself a survivor. He survived in Siberia and in the Red Army, and he lost his entire family in the Warsaw Ghetto and the extermination camps. Growing up in New York City, I would walk between my parents down the subway stairs to attend commemorations every year. First at the synagogue banquet hall, then at Hunter College, at Madison Square Garden, New York City's Temple Emanuel, and in these last years, with my mother at our local alternating West Hartford synagogues. Last year, with her virtually, and this year, without her. I walked next to my parents all those years, and now, like so many of you, I walk in their footsteps and know my children will follow. Though venues have changed, Every year, even during COVID, we gather to say their names, to light candles, to hear other voices lifted in song, and above all, to mourn and remember together. Thank you for joining us tonight. For a second year, we are conducting our Yom HaShoah ceremony over the internet. We don't know what will be the new norm once we come out of this pandemic, but we will continue these Yom HaShoah services with whatever vehicle we need to 
because we believe we must remember what the last generation had to endure. We do this in order to pass on what has become the watchwords of the Shoah, never forget. As a Jewish community, we come together once a year to remember the Shoah and what happens when hate overtakes love for one another. Survivors who are still with us know the evil that hate brings into the world. Eliana and I know all too well the significance of losing a survivor as we both suffered the loss of our mothers this past year. Both of our mothers had a passion for speaking about the Shoah and teaching people to understand the power that love has over hate. We come together to commemorate the Shoah, not only to remember, but to pass on these memories to maintain future Vador Vador from generation to generation. As we say Kaddish in this service, let us remember those millions who perished, who no longer have a voice, and no one to say Kaddish for them. Elie Wiesel of Blessed Memory said, and I quote, for the dead and the living, we must bear witness. Not only are we responsible for the memories of the dead, we are responsible for what we do with those memories. To the survivors in our community, we love, cherish, and honor you.
was ist geworden in meiner Städte? Whatever happened of my Städte, my home, when I reminisce as a child, I think about the little synagogue, the Hazan sonorous, glorious voice. Whatever happened to my hometown, whatever happened to my Städte, was ist geworden, meine Städte? Oh, 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 oh,
Good evening. My name is Shiri Sandler. I am the daughter of Elian Sandler, from whom you heard at the beginning of this program, and the grandchild of Holocaust survivors. Many of you knew my grandmother, Gisela Adamski. <clears throat> I'm also the managing director of the Agahozo Shalom Youth Village, a post-genocide reconstruction organization in Rwanda that works with orphaned and vulnerable youth. I am privileged to be here tonight with members of the Kamaitis family to talk about the Shoah and its legacies. Through the voices of three generations of this family, the essays of Kalman, a victim of the Shoah, and the words of Leon, a survivor of the Shoah and his sons, Dan and Dave, we will talk about how memory, trauma, and hope live on in a family after the Shoah. Leon, will you begin for us by sharing with us your father's work? Yes, I'd be privileged to, uh, Shiri. It's uh, very nice to have you. And uh, I'd like to first of all share with you excerpts from two essays. Uh, my father, who was the rabbi of the community of Katowice, Poland, he wrote for our community newspaper in order to show you the mood that prevailed prior to the Shoah itself. For Pesach in 1933, uh, three months after Hitler's rise to power, and the beginning of anti-Jewish legislation in Germany, he wrote an essay called Seder, and the text is well known to you from the Haggadah, of the five rabbis who sat all night telling about the freeing of our ancestors from slavery in Egypt. As you recall, the story ends when the rabbi students announce that it's time for the morning Shema prayer. My father makes this relevant to his day by having the students announce that it is the dawn of a new era. And he concludes with the following. The words of these students resonate with us today and call on us to persevere in this terrible catastrophe that has struck our people and to preserve our hope and courage. A time has come when we too must fulfill the important words of the Shema prayer. A threatening reality has overtaken us and is demanding the greatest sacrifice from us. Accordingly, let each of us understand the first verse of our daily prayer, the Shema. Love your eternal God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. With all your soul, even if you have to pay for loving the God of your ancestors with your life. But Jewish martyrology must not weaken our resolve for self-preservation. For after this dark night, the dawn of freedom will shine at last, and the words of our prophet will be fulfilled. The nation that walked in darkness will see a great light. A great light will shine on those who walk in the shadow of death. Shortly after my birth, on the occasion of Tisha B'Av, when Jews commemorate the destruction of both temples and the loss of independence, my father wrote an essay entitled Jewish Children as Martyrs. In the first few paragraphs, he bemoans the selfishness of adults who are willing to bring a child into the world at such a terrible time. My father gives historical examples of Jewish children as martyrs, including a royal demand that a child convert to another religion and then remarks, Today, the Caesar is no longer trying to win over Jewish children's hearts. He no longer tries to convert them to his own faith. He wants to annihilate them. He knows no pity. Sympathy is a stranger to him. Jewish children must once again become heroes. Teach your children to bear humiliation with pride, to accept degradation in peace and teach them in suffering never to deny, in an assault from hostile forces, never to lose hope. Hope in the enlightenment of humanity, hope in the deliverance of the Jewish people. My father was prescient. It was this philosophy of hope that must have given them the strength to approach Archbishop Andrei Sheptitsky and to ask him to hide me and then to let me go at the age of seven into a strange environment of a Greek Catholic Ukrainian monastery. At an age when children are beginning to learn how to socialize, how to play, how to read, 
I had to learn the dangers of being a Jew, about life and death. I had to become a new person, to learn a new name, Lev Kochaminsky, a new language, Ukrainian, new prayers in short Slavonic, a new culture, and never to mention my past, my family, or bathe in the presence of others. I had to learn farm chores and become acquainted with animals I had previously only met on a dinner plate. Here's a photograph of me in the monastery in front of our church. After we were liberated in the summer of 1944 by the Soviets, who began persecuting the church, I had to run away once again. I no longer had a family, but I was most fortunate to be taken in by a wonderful Jewish lady who lost her entire family. We received a temporary asylum in England in 1946 and were finally admitted to the United States in 1949. I am very grateful to Yeshiva University, which educated me through high school, college, and Hebrew Teachers Institute, as well as the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Thank you, Leon, for sharing with us your father's words and a little bit about your own story. Your father talks very powerfully about hope, right? Hope in the enlightenment of humanity, hope in the deliverance of the Jewish people. And when you take those two pieces side by side, I think you really see also his sense that these people themselves and what they can do are this great light. Can you talk to us a little bit, and then I'll ask your sons to do the same, about what lessons you took from your father's writing and how his writing has guided you? Well, <clears throat> my father's writings actually didn't guide me. And the reason I say that is because I didn't discover these writings until the mid 1990s when I was working on a book and I did research in Polish libraries. So I, and my memory of course of my father is certainly does not include his words because I was too young to appreciate them. What impressed me when I did find them was how much his words um, spoke to me and how much the conclusions that I came to in my own life paralleled those he expressed uh, at a time when I, when I formulated these, I had no way of knowing the views that he expressed and yet they were very much in keeping. It sounds like they're, they're deep within you either way and what drove him <clears throat> to believe these things is also part of you. I mean, Dan and Dave, can you talk about your experience of hearing these words and when you learned them, the role they played for you? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, we, we kind of obviously learned about them later on in life. As my dad said, he, he learned about them on, on later on in life. Um, uh, but I remember, you know, as he was doing it and as he would find things um, and sort of watching him come to this realization that he just spoke about, that, that they were very much one and the same. Um, on a lot of levels and that they thought alike. And even that I remember there were certain things where he would come in and point out that, you know, that's how he would have sort of phrased something or something, you know, things along those lines. Um, so that, that was really fascinating to watch. Um, uh, I personally um, usually will take these on um, the high holidays and, and take the book and read specific, I mean, you know, just uh, I'll go through it and read uh, different chapters um, because it's fascinating to me because it's a way sort of to get to know my grandfather, who obviously I never had the ability to get to know. Um, and who, because, you know, my dad was very young when he last saw them, he didn't really know. So he was sort of able to get reintroduced, if you will, to, to his grandfather through a lot of these writings and therefore reintroduce us. So it's been this amazing gift and, and uh, it's kind of incredible. I, I remember specifically dad, you know, like you, uh, what's the word struggling over a specific word and how exactly to, I mean, several probably, and how exactly to, uh, to translate it into English to, to keep the essence of what it was. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of passion that went into that project. Um, no question about it. Dan, yeah, was your I, experience similar? Sorry, go sure. ahead. No, that's okay. Um, I also like Dave actually um, pick up my father's essays 
or did at least before COVID on Yom Kippur or Rosh Hashanah. Um, there are a couple of essays in there in the beginning of the book where he, there are essays of sermons that he would give like, like 1932 or 33, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I would also always, you know, compare what he's saying and there, there I am sitting in Rosh Hashanah so many years later. And, you know, I have this, this, um, this amazing document of what he's seeing and things that he's so prescient, what he's seeing coming in the coming years, even in 32 and 33, he kind of knows what's coming and then there's eerie kind of, you know, so, and it's, it's, it's a tremendous um, privilege of me to have, for me to have those, to have those documents in synagogue, um, especially when I find a lot of the synagogue prayers to be just dry and unmeaningful. Um, I find that these really connect me, you know, to my family and something that is meaningful. And I think without them and other books that I bring along, I find that they're just very dry. Um, liturgy suddenly comes alive and I have a personal connection to it. So that's always been, you know, very important to me. I think no, that's sure personal the, connection. No, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, one thing I was going to, I was going to add in on that is, you know, we were obviously talking about it from a personal point of view, which I mean, of course makes sense. Um, but you know, one thing my dad has pointed out to me and other people have pointed out to me, um, that there are very few books like this that have, um, you know, a, a, a discussion of what was happening during that time from someone who was so intelligent, obviously, and so well-spoken and such a big figure in the community that, you know, this isn't only a gift to us, obviously, but this is a gift to, to everybody. And, um, we have a very good friend of ours who's a who's a Judaica scholar who when he when he came across this he was just absolutely blown away by it and ended up reviewing it for a couple of magazines and whatnot. But I think that it's a much larger piece than obviously what it just means to us. It's interesting because it's a place where, as you're saying, the the scholarly and the historical, sort of the deeply meaningful in the scholarly and the historical, come together comes together with deeply meaningful personally, and it's interesting to be able to be connected to something so historically important as individuals um, and as his son and grandsons. Leon, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that, um, about his perspective on the Shoah and your perspective, which maybe is a strange thing to ask a survivor, but the way that you think about your experience, the way that you've related your experience to the people who love you and the people who are close to you, how does that relate to the way your father talked about what was coming for the Jews of his community? Well, it was a, uh, <clears throat> uh, obviously my ideas changed over a period of time as I've got, grown older, but um, uh, clearly my emotions were extremely complex uh, and, um, one of the things that I was very conscious of uh, uh, very early along, uh, particularly as the children were born and were growing up, is to make sure not to transmit to them any feeling of um, hatred or a pessimistic feeling in life, but to transmit to them a positive view of uh, Judaism, a positive view of our history without hiding anything, but I didn't want them to grow up with a guilt feeling that they had uh, to pay back something, that they, I wanted them to grow up normally, basically. And uh, I have to pay tribute to uh, my wife, Jean, uh, for helping me, uh, not only helping me, but really showing me the way because uh, one of the problems that, um, that I had uh, as a father uh, was that I had no memory of um, a normal life growing up. So I couldn't, I had no memory of being in grade school or playing baseball or playing with other kids. Uh, those, there were whole lacunae missing there which I had to make up from sitcoms and other things uh, that I couldn't supply from within me. I love that image, right, of, of you, this very learned man, 
kind of bringing in pop culture to figure out and your wife's input, of course, to figure out how to raise your children. Dan, this time, I think we'll, we'll start with you. On the other end of the experience your father just described, what was that like for you? How did you guys understand the Shoah as children? The Judaism was very important in our household growing up. And that wasn't necessarily connected to the Holocaust per se. The Holocaust was obviously an important, um, important event, obviously in, 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 in life and in Jewish life and my father's life and everything, but it wasn't something that we, we spoke about, you know, on a regular basis. I think for many of us, the Holocaust isn't just a presence, it's also an absence. And that for many children growing up as second generation, there is that presence through absence. And so Dave, as, as you think about what your father and brother just said, first of all, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it, of course, but also is there, how did, did your family navigate absence in this way? You know, it's, uh, that's, a, I'll, I'll talk about that first, I guess. I'm not, you know, when you're a kid, I look back on my childhood and I, I think it's sort of like a really, <laughs> average boring american childhood not that it was boring but um i don't i don't think of it in any i, I don't i don't remember there being you know we we had we, we had grandparents on my mother's side and we didn't have grandparents on my father's side and that i mean i think as a kid you just adapt to stuff and that's sort of like that's sort of how the table was set and so you go okay i guess this is what it is i think what my dad and my mom wanted us to make sure of was that we learned about it when we were ready to learn about it which i think we did and, and more importantly, to make sure that the Holocaust didn't define who he is or who my grandparents are. And it shouldn't because it's, it's arguably the, one of the most you know, significant things to happen for obvious reasons, but that's not who they were. And, um, and, and I think, and I personally am very indebted to that because I don't, I mean, this may sound very strange to people who are listening, but I don't really think of them as victims of the Holocaust, even though obviously that's who they were, but I think of them as as the people that I've heard this little bit of stories about, and that he's he's you know, and I've I've been to see where they lived, and I've read I've read his autobiography, and I've read these 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 um, these essays, and and quite frankly, that's that's really what I would rather, even though I know that there's a lot of dark a lot darker stuff. Um, but those are the people that I would like to connect with. Um, and I think we were, we were granted this um, incredible gift to be able to, to, to have that connection. If I could add one other comment um, around, I think it was around 1992, I was invited to address the community on Yom HaShoah. I think it was the first time that I addressed the community. And I made a statement that my son-in-law reminded me recently about. And that was that I thought that we dwelled too much on the moment of people's death and not enough on the purpose of their lives. And I was more interested in transmitting their, what they lived for and what they wanted to transmit to their children and grandchildren than I did on the moment of death. And I think that that may summarize it better. I think that's beautiful. And I think it's a gift to be able to give your children to see your family for who they were and not for how they died. For all your father's foresight, people didn't know what was coming. They were living their lives and learning and loving and doing all these things everyone does. and and both of you, Leon, you and your father have, have really put that into words and moved that forward through generations. And so I ask you, and I think of you as, as people, but also as fathers, what are the lessons you take from your dad's words, from your grandfather's words that you want us to hear and that you want your children to hear? You know, in the, in the piece that my dad read, my grandfather speaks about hope, which to me, um, it's a little hard to understand how he could understand what was going on and be talking about hope. But I think that shows uh, what an incredible personality he was and character he was and how much he understood that that's how powerful that can be. And, and I think that we were brought up to, we were brought up with, with several, 
with several things that I think speak to that. One is one is to always know that there's there's always something better around the corner. You know, and one of the the specific things that I've heard him say to groups before, which has always amazed me, is um, you know that you can hate a person, but you can't hate a people. Ukrainians killed a tremendous amount of our family, and Ukrainians saves my my father and my uncle among other people. Um, so you can't you you can't lump a group and, and, and have hatred towards them. And there, there should be no place in your heart for that because that's not what brings about a future. So I, I think that, you know, hope was a big part of it. And I think the other part of it was also, and, you know, I mean, he's, he's a doctor and my mom has done unbelievable things for the community and, and, and across the board, we were brought up always being taught that, that, you know, sort of your, your job is to help. (laughs) And that comes in many ways. And I think, I think myself, um, my brother and, and my sister, uh, you know, we've all, we we all do that in, in different ways. I mean, Danny's a teacher and Debbie's a nurse, so they actually do it in their jobs. I work in the film industry, so that doesn't help at all, but I do it on things on the side, but I, I don't think that those are things that, that, that we do accidentally. I think that we were, sort of brought up to believe there's a reason that you're here and the reason that you're here is to make things better than they are in whatever small or large way you can. And I, I think that's really, you know, that comes probably from our grandparents through our father and the fact that he was able to go through what he went through and come out being the person that he is with actual, you know, an incredible sense of humor and an intelligence and, and hope and, and always striving to make things better and et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's really quite unbelievable. So that's kind of what I've taken from both of them. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's, that's, to me, that's the legacy of these essays and, and what his parents, um, you know, probably would have instilled in him had there been more time. Thank you. Danny, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I was going to say hope too, but since Dave stole that, um, I'm going to add another word. Um, that was going to be part of my thing. I know. I think hope is very, very important. I think there's another word, um, perspective, which I'm going to kind of add to that. And I think, I think that's very much very key for me. So when you come from a family as I do, and you have an amazing role model in Mensch as, as my father is, and my, and my mother, um, who Dave mentioned, who shouldn't be forgotten in, in, in all of this. Um, I try to teach, you know, my kids, you act as far as teaching my, you know, try to teach my son, um, things like, you know, volunteering and helping other people is very, very important. We're put on this, you know, earth for a certain reason, and it's not to make the most money or to do the most this or the most that, but that <clears throat> life is very important. And if you, you know, perspective is important too, because as you said, there is anti-Semitism and there is all these things, and it is very easy. We have had COVID for the past year. It's very easy to lose that hope. Um, but then when you look at perspective, you know, we know so much more about the world. And I see the world that my father came from and how much he made out of his life. And yes, we're always going to have these problems. Um, but the world today is so much, so much in advance and so much, so much, has so much more going for it um, than it had back in the 30s um, in, in Europe. And I think that's a, perspective is a really important thing to, to use in life. Um, that, you know, times can be bad, but, you know, times were always, you know, much worse and take the lessons, don't focus on those bad things, but take the lessons and make your life in, into, you know, the best that you can, that you can do. So, um, so I think that that idea of perspective is key. Leon, is there anything you would want to add as you hear your sons talking about the experience of you, essentially? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, they have said it all. I, I think that we as parents can uh, do everything we can to teach something, but we don't transmit anything until we know that it's been heard on the other side. So listening to them, but also knowing them as individuals and what they have done with their lives and the type of people that they both have uh, become and are, uh, is is all the uh, is everything I need really to very to tell me that what we did at least had some positive influence. Well, that's lovely to hear. I'm watching the three <clears throat> of you, Chef Nachas, as my mother was probably saying right. herself as she watches this, is a is a real treat. <clears throat> I want to thank all three of you for 
for taking the time to do this and for letting me be a part of this conversation with your family. It's been, it's been an honor and a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We just heard the words of El Malay Rahamim, the prayer that asks God to watch over our loved one's souls. It reads, God, full of mercy, who dwells on high, provide a sure rest upon the divine presence's wings within the range of the holy and the pure, whose shining resembles the skies all the souls of the six million Jews, victims of the European Holocaust, who were murdered, slaughtered, burnt, and exterminated for the sanctification of the name by the German Nazi assassins and their helpers from the rest of the peoples. Therefore, the master of mercy will protect them forever from behind the hiding of his wings and will tie their souls with the rope of life. The everlasting is their heritage. The Garden of Eden shall be their resting room and they shall rest peacefully upon their lying place. They will stand for their fate in the end of days. And let us say, Amen. We remember for blessing Gisela Adamski, Bernie Frydenberg, Ruth Goldschmidt, B. Israel, Edith Kynas, Miriam Litterman, Ida Levy, and Lola Sweet. May their memories be for blessing. Yit Kadal, Vid Kadash, Shemei Rabbah. 
Beama di vra hirte viam lich mal hute. Be chayachon of yomechon. Uv chaye de ho bait Yisrael. Bagala of his man kariv. Vimru amin. Yehe shme rabba mivarach leolum ulome almaya. Yit barach viishtabach. Vit parar vit ramam vit nase. Vit hadar vit hale vit halal. Shme de kudisha. Brichu. Leilam in kobir chata vishirata, tush be chata venechamarta, damiran be alma veimru amin. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, vechaim alenu ve al kol yisrael veimru amin. O se shalom bimramav, hu ya se shalom, alenu ve al kol yisrael veimru amin. May the one who causes peace in the high heavens and peace upon us, all Israel and all the world. And may their names always be remembered for blessing. Zog ni kein molas du gets dem letzten weg, hosch himlen leene verständ leue teg, welle kummen wird noch unser eus gebänkte show, es weg kapotten und zertrott, Mir seinen do, weil kommen wird noch uns herausgebeugt der Show. Es wird abbeugt und uns ertrot, mir seinen do. Und grünen Palmenland wird feiten Land von Schnee. Mir kommen und mit unser Pein, mit unser Weh. Und wo gefallen sieht's a Spritz von unser Blut, sprotzen wird dort unser Gwurre, unser Mut. Und wo gefallen sieht's a Spritz und von unser Blut, sprotzen wird dort unser Gwurre, unser Mut. Das Lied geschrieben ist mit Blut und nicht mit Lei. Sitz nicht a little von a Feugel läuf der Frei. Das hat a Volk zwischen Fandike wend. Das Lied gesungen mit na Gannis in die Hand. Das hat a Volk zwischen Fandike wend. Das Lied gesungen mit Na gan es in die Hand. So gniet kein Molas, du gehst dem letzten Weg. Hosch Himmlen bleien, verstellen, bleie Teg. Welle kommen, wird noch uns erreus gebänkt, der Show. Es wird abheugt und uns erstrott. Mir seinen do, willkommen wird not unser eus gebänkte Show. Es wird abheugt und unser Trott, mir seinen do. Thank you. 